church announcements. Good morning. These are our announcements. We would like to congratulate Deacon C.J. Jones, Jr. on his upcoming graduation from Athens State University. The NEM CEC has partnered with the Huntsville Trash Pandas to work in the concession booths during home games. Volunteer dates are listed in the e-news bulletin. If you are interested in volunteering, please contact Deacon Fred Lloyd. The annual Women's Day program will be held on Sunday, April 28th at 9.30 a.m. The guest speaker will be Minister Tiffany Sledge. Women are asked to pledge $100 and men are asked to pledge $50. Ladies, the color of the day is white with pearls. Choir rehearsal for Women's Day is April 16th at 6.30 p.m. and April 27th at 10 a.m. Summer STEAM Camp will take place June 3rd through July 19th. Children 1st through 8th grades are eligible to attend. The cost is $200 per week. Visit info at NEMCEC.org for more information. Vacation Bible School will take place June 3rd through 5th from 6.30 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. The theme is scuba, diving into friendship with God. The scripture is John 15, verse 15. Contact Deaconess Annette Pitts for more information. Hopewell Men's Ministry is planning a men's retreat on September 6th and 7th at the Vision Retreat Center located at 187 Oscar Webster Road. The cost is $140 per person. Contact Brother Richard Kemp for more information. If you are a member of Hopewell and are currently seeking employment, visit NorthAlabamaJobs.com to fill out an application. After completing the application, please notify the church office. We are hopeful the opportunities through AIDT and other collaborative efforts will bring successful career opportunities to our community. Hopewell's Music Ministry is accepting applications for a church organist. Contact the church office at 256-379-3250 to schedule an interview with Dr. Hambrick. If you need copies for a meeting at Hopewell, Please submit your information to the church office at least one day prior to the date the copies are needed. Please remember the church office hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Please email information for the e-news bulletin to the church office by 12 noon on Tuesday. If it is received after the deadline, it will be included in the following week. The bulletin is submitted for approval by Pastor Davison on Tuesday afternoon. On the first, third, and fourth Sunday of each month, immediately following worship service, Hopewell invites all first-time visitors to join us in the welcome room for the visitor's reception. This is our opportunity to thank our first-time visitors for worshiping with us and show our appreciation to them. If you would like to add someone to the prayer list or have a death in the family, please contact the church office. In the case of a death in the family, we will be happy to send out an e-news announcement containing the funeral arrangements. That concludes our announcements. Thank you. This coming Saturday, will be, which will be the 27th of April, for all the young children who want to urge you on the third Sunday in May, we have an board meeting at two o'clock on the 27th of April. The next urge board meeting we have with the young children will be on May the 18th at two o'clock. God loves a cheerful giver, it's giving time.
Remember the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ while he said, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. three ways there are three ways you can give it hope well mail in to hope mail in to hope well church 292 cemetery road new mark alabama 35761 church website mbc.org or texting in texting number 256-255-7521 let's pray heavenly father we come this morning give you all the honor glory and praise Thank you, Lord, so, so much for saving saving, and forgive our sin. We ask you to bless the all in a very special way. Spread your word around the world. All men may come and know you. All blessed ask your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, continue worshiping songs. Forgive me, but this time we have praise then.
Come on, commission them to let their light shine. This is the set hour and the moment for Christ to shine bright. When they see him lifted up, he'll draw. When they see him lifted up, he'll draw. When they see him shining bright, he'll draw. He'll draw. He'll draw, he'll draw, he'll draw. When they see him shining bright, he'll draw. When they see him shining bright, he'll draw. He'll draw, he'll draw. When they see him shining bright, 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 he'll draw. He'll draw. He'll draw. When they see him shining bright, he'll draw. When they see him shining bright, he'll draw. Amen. Thank you for spreading your love to our Savior this morning. Praise the end. It's a time where well, worship and song.
in your choir those two sections song shake the devil off and Jesus loves me praise God I was looking this past week at Exodus the third chapter 13 and 14 verse until he you can read it Moses asked God a rhetorical question he said what would I tell the people of Israel your name when I go to them. And, Jesus, and God told him, he said, tell him, my name is I Am. I Am sent me to you. And what God was really telling Moses was this right here. My name is eternal. And that my name is to be remembered. And he fulfilled his promise through the covenant of Moses. At this time, I pass to come and bring us a word.
you tonight, you ought to lift up holy hands and say, praise God. Praise God for the things he's done. Praise God. Sweet. 
You allowed us to see a brand new day, a brand new week now, God, full of your favor and your anointing. Now, God, in this moment of preaching, I pray that the seed of your word would be deposited in hearts, that it might produce fruit as we come to this building to live Christ and to witness Christ. We thank you, God, now that the assignment of your glory is upon the church. We thank you, God, as we go forth now to exercise in your will. We thank you, God, that your favor is upon us. We thank you, God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit now. God, I pray that as you use this vessel of club, let not a single word be wasted in the preach moment. Use this vessel, God, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it fall fresh now, not only on the speaker, but all who will hear. And then, God, we thank you now that you will not punish your people in the midst of this for the frailty of this preacher. We ask and pray it now that Jesus be glorified, that this body be edified, and even those who are unsaved and lost would find their way to the ark of safety. We pray for those who are watching the broadcast as well. We pray these things now in the precious, preeminent, and priceless name of Jesus, who is the Christ, and the church says, Amen. Amen. Thank God for his spirit that does live the of accident in him it's in him that we live move and have our being everything about us is who we are because of christ amen anybody celebrating that on today amen amen it's getting hot in here but that's good amen and it's sometime on to get a little heated and a little warm in the household of faith amen we thank god for each of you who are here our worship leader minister garner for leading us to this point these babies let's give god some praise for them as they say they gave us some good instruction. Shake the devil off. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They told you what to do. Shake him off. Amen. But you got to do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now he's coming back. But when he come back again, you know how to do the process. Work. Shake him off. Keep shaking him off. Until the Lord gets you the way he would have you to be. But even, even as we go forward, they told us that Jesus loves us. Amen. Sometimes you just need to be reminded in relationship that the relationship is still sure, it's still steady. It's on solid ground no matter what's happened. That nothing has impacted. You're still in covenant relationship with him. And that's why you're here on today. Amen. We wish blessings upon our pastor, Emeritus, Pastor Cole, wherever you are. As I say every week, we pray the favor and blessing of God would overwhelm you in your life. Amen. This first Sunday of May, we're to lift the love offering for him. So get it in mind what you want to do, just a blessing to his family. He hadn't asked for this, but we want to do this because we love him. Amen. 34 years ought to mean something. And he's the only pastor you all have left that's still alive that you can show kindness to. Amen. For the labor and the work, regardless of what you thought about, it went for the Lord. Amen. And God honor him for that. And we want to certainly bless his life uh, because of that. Amen. Amen. Certainly good to see many of you here. And I'm so glad to be the president of Drake State. Amen. Amen. With us today, Mr. Sims, Dr. Sims. Amen. We're certainly glad to have you with us on today. Amen. They've got some, they've got some good things coming up. I'm sure she's going to share some of that at the conclusion of our worship service with some of you as you engage her. Amen. Certainly good to have you in our presence on today. Amen. We certainly thank God for all of our guests who are here and certainly those of you who are members. Amen. For your being present in the house of God. Amen. I want to call your attention now to the gospel according to St. John. Chapter 4. Not going to be where you may think with the woman of the well, but the woman of the well is a part of uh, the message briefly in the beginning. Amen. I want to call your attention really to the last, for the last part of this chapter in verse 34. We're going to look at verses 34 through 36. It's on the screen in the King James Version. I'm going to read it from the Christian Standard Bible. You're more than welcome to join in with whatever version you do have. Jesus says there, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus told them, don't you say, there are still four more months and then the harvest. Listen to what I'm telling you. Open your eyes and look at the fields because they are ready for harvest. 
The reaper is already receiving pay and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. Amen. I want to use as a subject for this text, when are you going to get to it? Or as we say in slang, when are you going to get to it? <laughs> Amen. I want to read this from the ESV. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper may rejoice to gather. Amen. When are you going to get to it? Beloved, Jesus has just spent some quality time. And I do mean quality time. With a woman in the middle of the day as they sat at a well. And in that interaction, you know, the helping he helps her to gain understanding. And to receive revelation that really changes her life. And sets her on fire as a witness of Jesus. And watch this, she can't keep it to herself. She runs into her entire town and shares the news. And just as she has left her water pots and run back into town to tell everybody that she sees, come see a man who told me everything I've done. Jesus' disciples arrive and they are amazed at and they are inquiring about a few things that they have observed about what's taking place. First of all, they're wondering why is it that Jesus, being who he was, was spending time talking with a strange woman that none of them were familiar with. You, you do understand on your assignment, you will have to engage some strange people in some strange places and have some strange conversation and your familiars will be unfamiliar with them. And they may ask you like they asked Jesus, why are you talking to them? But don't be alarmed. Don't be worried about their interaction, their, their inquisition of what you're doing. Just stay on task. And they're wondering, why is it that Jesus, uh, we know him pretty well, and, and it's strange to us that Jesus is talking to somebody that we don't know anything about. And then secondly, they're, they're wondering, as Jesus was there, they had gone on assignment, they were wondering uh, about his energy level, because uh, surely Jesus has not had any natural food to eat. And the Bible says, if you haven't closed your Bible, it says that the disciples kept urging him, Rabbi, you need to eat something. Their, their concern is that uh, he has something, he has something that would satisfy his natural need, which was to eat. And they had gone into town to, to buy food, which was nourishment for the physical frames, for the body, for the physical bread that was needed. But Jesus exposes to them that he has partaken of some food, some nutrition that they did not yet understand. I almost missed this, but I was, I was looking at this afresh today. And the Lord said, don't forget to tell them that this food that Jesus has found was satisfying him because it pushed him beyond what was just natural and the things of the natural which sustain and supply the natural and it pressed him into the things of the spirit of God which not only satisfy the natural but satisfy the demand of the father's will on his life can I just tell you the church would do well to press beyond just satisfying what is our natural and our secular need and press now into the things of the spirit of God that do bring glory to God one of the great tragedies of the modern church is that people fill the house of God but have no interest in the things of God. Let me say that again for the crowd that missed it. The, the, church, the church sadly is filled in the modern day with seekers and people who fill pews, who fill the house of God but have really no interest 
in the work of God and the things of God and the holiness of God and the witness of God to a lost world. And what Jesus is really setting them for, he says, sometimes you got to get beyond your belly. Yeah, I knew it wasn't going to be many amens today, but I came to tell the truth, shame the devil, and set somebody free. He, he, he shows us that there are moments in your life where you got to press beyond the natural need and begin to operate according to the spiritual design and purpose of your life. He says... He satisfies the Father's will and notice his desire as he says himself is to do and to accomplish and watch this to finish Amen. the Father's work Amen. that he has been sent for. Do you know that there's a day coming that's reckoning for all of us that we won't have to keep our hymn books and Bibles in hand. We're going to lay them down. We're going to put down our sword in the sand. We're going to lay down our labor and all of our frustration in the work and we're going to have to give an account for the accomplishment of what God has given to us. Yeah. Madam President, you won't always be at Drake State. But what you have to do is live and serve as if you know that God's going to have you to answer for how you've handled it. Uh, city school board member and teacher in school, pastor, deacon, mother in the church. You, you got to understand that at some point labor is over and it's time to be accountable for the assignment of God on our lives. And preaching has to push you to the place not where you are comfortable, but where you are conforming to what God's will is. Amen. Jesus, I love this text. Because as Jesus exposes where his own heart is and what his own desire is, I love this text because what he does is he invites the 12 followers. His followers to see the moment that they were in as well. Tell your neighbor, you got to see the moment. You got to see the moment. You got to see the moment you're in on post-COVID. You got to see the moment that you're in with our young people slipping and sliding away. You got to see the moment where our older members are saying, I'm tired, I'm ready to sit down on what God has given. You got to see the moment that we are in in this community that's thriving and growing and rooftops and housetops are being added. Families are moving into this area. You got to see the moment that you are in. Point number one, there is a window it's so in the text, he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus tells him, don't you say that I still four months and then comes the harvest. Jesus acknowledges that time plays a factor in how he moved and ministered as he was announcing the kingdom of God was at hand. Time does matter. Time does matter as you move and matriculate through this life. Time does matter how you use 24 hours every single day has to matter for us because there's a window there's a space of opportunity in every life to sow and to go oh y'all too quiet in here today I, I thought I was talking to the crowd I was getting ready to go forth and to please God with your life and there ought to be a witness in here that says I'm looking for that place where I'm supposed to sow and I want to know where I'm supposed to go to go into the field in order to prepare the harvest for the one who would soon be coming to reap that field. There is an opportunity. There is a window that all of us has. And listen to this. No person can keep you from that window. You can't say I was prevented an opportunity, Pastor, because I'm a person of color. I was prevented an opportunity because I'm not rich. I'm not this. I'm not pretty. I'm not that. have a window and every life is a crop in that field are you operating in your window are you realizing somebody has been charged to do the work you've been called to do you got a plant in this season and planting takes place with the harvest in mind I grew up on a farm 
in Carver County, Alabama, and there my grandparents farmed this well. And on those farms, my grandfather would say that we plant with the harvest in mind. You don't just plant it to see it disappear and expect no crop to come back. You put something in the ground because something is coming up. And the believer in this text, Jesus is saying, you need to consider where you are. The farmer understands that Jesus is pointing out that keep up with how long it is until harvest time. In other words, when you put it in the ground, you know that I've got four months of waiting to see what's coming up. And then it's going to be time to get it out of the ground and bring it out of the field. And that's what the believer has to understand. If the farmer knows there's a space and a window of time, what is wrong with the church? Got a window. They know. And they also know some farmers are so so skilled, they know that you got a certain window to put certain crop in the ground. And if you don't put it in in that window, it's not gonna produce. They know they got to get it in in a certain time, Brother WD, before they can get it out. But they know if they put it in in that time that it's going to produce and they give it the best chance to produce because they move inside that window. We have a window with our children. Experts, I don't know who the experts are, but they tell us that, and I'm glad the babies are here today, they tell us that by the age of five years old, by the time they reach kindergarten, much of who they are by their character has already been put in them by their parents and those who directly influence them at home. That means if they're a problem at school, it's because it was five years or not, uh, you didn't use that window. And sometimes even when you use that window, you still have to use the switch or belt or shoe or extension cord whatever it was when we were growing up they could find it but you got to use that window for correction for supplication for poor God so that you can make sure that a certain crop has the best opportunity to be produced there's a window to plant and to sow but then secondly you got to also realize that the fields are already white here it is. There are two statements here that I wanted to highlight because when they hit my spirit, I said, I got to share them. There are two statements here that are key for followers of Jesus, especially today. Number one, listen to what I am telling you. Oh, that's paramount right there. Not, not what your neighbor said, not what, not what they said at the deacon meeting, not what they said at the members meeting, not what the usher board president had to say, not what the pastor said. He says, it's in the text, I'm telling you, I'm not making it up. Jesus said the church needs to learn how to listen to what he says. Amen. It matters, I'm telling you, it matters who informs your movement and your mobility and your planning. You, you sometimes listen to the wrong voice. They tell you, I wouldn't plant that nowhere. I wouldn't go there. You got to stop listening to that voice and you got to listen to him. He says, listen to what I am saying. We need a church with members who his ears are attentive and, and, have, and have tuned their ears to hear what the Lord says. Let me give you this for free. You can't be listening to him and be out of order with who he has said. Amen, lights. Listen to what I'm saying. And then notice the second statement is even more apparent. When he's got your attention, he says, now, look, open up your eyes. It requires a body of believers who have ears to hear him and an eye to see what's happening in the spirit. Amen. You got to ask God, give me eyes that go beyond the natural and just looking at all the things that are manifesting right now in the natural. I want to be able to see the things that are happening in the spirit. I want to see that that seems to be impossible, intangible. I want to be able to feel those things and know those things. I want revelation of those kind of things because that's what are going to draw me and increase my appetite for more. He says, look, open up your eyes. Close ears and close eyes will plague ministry. Because he says, just open your eyes and don't just open your eyes and be wild eyed. He says, open your eyes and turn them to the direction of the field. 
Look at what's happening all around you. Notice what's happening in your community, in your school, in your church, in your family, with your children, with your spouse, with your co-worker, and even with your enemies. Look at the fields. Because harvest time, what you will begin to see is you will begin to see that harvest time is already upon us. That's the thing we don't want to admit. We want to think that we got, oh, we got all this time. Young people would like to think, I got a long life ahead of me. That's not a guarantee. I work in the funeral home. We bury babies as well as those who live the full life. It does not matter. Life, the, the, the Lord is calling us. And the harvest is already upon us. The space between sowing and gathering, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you, is closing fast. So whatever it is you got to do for the Lord, whatever it is you're supposed to do in the field, you better get busy. Not only because your life is depending on it, but because those you've been sent to are perishing in their sin. And this requires that these disciples and all of us see that the time is in OW now to prepare the fields for God's harvesting of his crop. But the question is, does it matter to us? Are you so consumed with your own desires, your own interests, your own agenda that you cannot see that there's a holy assignment upon every person that's sitting in a pew? Everybody that raised holy hands in praise to God also has divine purpose and anointing and assignment on their life to get something done in the kingdom. You have said by. And said, we hired you, pastor. We hire people. Put people in place to do those things. I'm saying across the board, it's all of our responsibility. And I'm not afraid to tell you that you've been out of order. That you've been disobedient. That you've been lazy. That you've been critical of those who went into the field while you sat on the porch. It's time for all of us to get off the bench and get in the game. And I rebuke any spirit that comes against what the Lord has demanded upon in the house of God. Every anointing, every assignment shall go forth and prosper in the name of Jesus. Against every sickness and disease. Against every foul and demonic influence. Against every addiction and generational curse. It shall have success in putting it down and casting it away from families and from people that are I've asked God post COVID I am not going to go through another season of struggle to get the minute and the minuscule things done in the kingdom God move me God change this because I'm not going to go through another season of frustration and you shouldn't want that either you want to want to go the glory of God to fill his house and the people of God feel the anointing and the breakthrough and the healing and the joy And because of the work of the Holy Spirit in hearts, here's what you got to understand. The working of the Holy Spirit is already at work in the hearts that are in the field. You say, well, when they get ready, I'll go to them. I'll, I'll prepare myself. I'll spend some time in prayer and, and I'll think about it a little bit longer. No, 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 no. You, you, you need to understand that wherever he's sending you, he's already broken the soil. Oh, you're still missing it. He's already, he's already broke the, the soil. And I don't mean just the top soil. He's already dug it out. He's already got the nutrients where they're in place to start churning and, and, and allowing them to germinate. He's already got the soil broken up. So all you got to do is come through now and plant what God told you to plant. The ready is what I'm saying. It doesn't need another season of waiting on the soil to be ready. The field is ready now to 
drop seed in. All I'm telling you is this is the day to go and reach and to claim the harvest of the Lord. Did you hear what I said? It's the, this is the day when you leave here. I want you running up out of here. Not to gossip about anything other than the gospel. But if you're going to leave here and go tell anything, go tell somebody so that you can reach somebody and claim the harvest of God. The harvest now is not for the money in men's pockets. Not for the like and the popularity of them following us on Twitter and Facebook and whatever social media outlet we can get on. The harvest is for the soul of men. Jesus dies on Calvary and is resurrected on the third day for the soul of man. And then man can live with him forever regardless of his sin. The blood paid that debt and the church has the responsibility to go claim the harvest for the souls of men. That part of man that never dies. And you're saying, I hear you, Pastor. I hear you talking about the harvest. But can you tell me the who of the harvest? Who, the who, the, a lot of us are wondering about the who of this harvest. Who are they? Where are they going to come from? Where are they now? Well, I'm going to tell you the answer to those questions is this. Uh, they're your friends. Some of them are your family members. Some of them are your neighbors. Others are your co-workers. Some are uh, acquaintances. Some are folks that you kick it with and you just cool with on Friday night. And some of them, watch this, are even among the number of your enemies. These are those that are just ripe. I'm telling you, they ripe like that juicy plum on the tree. That ripe like that juicy tomato on the branch. That grape on the vine. They are ripe for witness and dropping a word of witness on their life. The gospel good news I told you two weeks ago. That's what they're ripe for. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. they're ripe for your witness. And the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for reaching with the message of the cross of Calvary. Uh, the more prevalent question is not the who. The more, the more prevalent question is, do you see these people as such? And will you go after them as his harvest as such? See, we can stand here all day, all day. Some of you may feel like we stay all day anyway, but you may say we can stand here all day and we can talk about it. But the, prim the, the primary thing I'm bringing to you today is when are you going to be about it? Amen. You talk, oh, we talk. We can convince the best of us that we are God's chosen and we're so holy and so righteous, but you ain't witnessing to nobody. That arrogance is such a stench that folks won't even come in your vicinity because it just stinks before they ever get in your presence. The self-righteousness and the stuck-upness. But if you would just tell that testimony, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. If you tell that testimony, that I was on my way to a burning hell, but he snatched me back. And they say, how did that happen? You say, I believe the message of the gospel and it changed my life. Can it work for me? Absolutely. All you got to do is put your trust in him as well. There's a crowd, I'm telling you, that are, listen to me, that are waiting on and are ready for your arrival. I'm telling you, you got an audience. Let me tell you why it matters that you, that you go to them. Here, here it is. Their brokenness, their lostness, their sinfulness will continue perhaps if you do not share what God has put in your hand. That's why you can't be selfish. You got all this good news, all this joy, all this praise, all this favor on your life. And your neighbor is just that broke, bound, broke down, busted and disgusted. Your co-worker in the cubicle next to you while you smiling and playing your gospel music. They're sitting over there about ready to slit their wrists and go home and harm themselves. And we got the 
answer. We have the panacea right here in our hearts and the Bible is encouraging us. It's time to share. I know it's not popular anymore. They tell us that, 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 that we're moving to the age where Christianity is not the popular thing in our society because of its standard of holiness and righteousness. But let me tell you, while it may be decreasing in popularity, it should be increasing with power in our lives. So much so that while it's not popular to them, they cannot deny the power that's working in us. There's a window. The fields are white with harvest. The last point is there's no time to waste. Notice verse 36. It says that the, the reaper is already receiving pay and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. Can I tell you that these things that pertain to our diligent work in the fields of this life, they must be accomplished and embraced with a sense of urgency. It's not just that you go and do them, but you got to do it with a sense of urgency. And as I said earlier, one of the major issues plugging the church is that we really show we don't care much for the things of God. And so they're not a priority. They're not on the top of your list when you wake up in the morning. But they've got to rise in priority in your life in order for you to see the manifestation of power and watch this, a change in life that you love. We're concerned too much so with an overwhelming sense of seeing church like Walmart. Shop down the aisle and see what I like. If I don't like it, I go shop somewhere else. But when you think about it this way, what is it that you bring in that Walmart that adds to it? Are you an investor in Walmart Corporation? Because when you're an investor in it, you care how the business goes because the greater the business is, then the more you profit because you're part of it. And you got to begin to see yourself in the kingdom as an agent of God, as a representative and an ambassador for the Holy Spirit as you go forth in the earth. As goes the kingdom, so goes your life. You got to move beyond your comfort and keeping what's good for you. I submit we cannot wait to get in the fields. We cannot waste these precious moments of the hours of the days which we have left. You may not be able to do anything with what you've already had spent. And you may not be able to go back and get those hours back. But what are you going to do with the days of the hours and the seconds and minutes that you have and the weeks that you have left of your life? You may be out of, you may have already retired, but as you are retired, God still keeps energy in those bones. What are you going to do now in retirement that's going to give you benefits that are out of this world? Seconds, minutes, days become precious and valuable, especially as it relates to someone that you love escaping the fire of hell and receiving the joy of eternal life. Yeah. Notice the text says the reaper is already receiving pay and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper rejoice together. And all that means is that the harvest and the crop is already coming in. Meaning that it's already being added to the barn being gathered together and the return on it is being manifest even now as those who labor in the field we share what Christ has sown on our behalf which was his finished work at the cross and then we rejoice along with him who has sown and the one who will ultimately reap one day in glory we're able to rejoice together 
We sow through our faith in him and through our agreement with him as witnesses of his in the world. Can you imagine to see all of your loved ones, all of your friends, all of your neighbors, all of your co-workers, all of your church goers, fellow church attenders into the kingdom as a part of the Lord's harvest to be in heaven with him forever. Do you see them as such? I know they're still getting drunk. I know they're still getting high. I know they're still doing illicit things with their body and believing erroneous things in their plan of life. But do you see them entering the kingdom? That's how you got to see them. That's how you got to see them. I got one more. Because when you see the window and you see that the fields are white, they're ready. And then you begin to see that we cannot waste any time. The last thing is, this is really our worth. Uh, to get this and wait in the kingdom, you may be wondering, what is the way of the believer? Here it is, Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Here it is in the ESV, it says, and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The Christian Center Bible says this, those who have insight will shine like the bright expanse of the heavens. And those, here it is, who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Everybody wants to be a, a, a social media star. Everybody wants to be an Instagram model in these days. And somebody in the church wants to be a star. Well, I want to tell you that if you want to be a star and you're looking to shine bright, here, here's your opportunity. Here, here, here it is right here. You want to shine bright in the kingdom? Here it is. Here you go. This is where your worth and weight and influence in the kingdom is placed because soul winners are valuable and honorable and treasurable in the kingdom. Those who don't get and bring others into the kingdom are valued by God and treasured in the kingdom. When your time as a deacon, when your time as a pastor, and a minister, and a member, and a usher, and a choir member, and a mother, and a singer, and a youth leader, when all that's behind us, when you stand before God, will he see you as a star? Amen. <laughs> he ought to. Stars are treasured because, here it is, they want the fields well. I know some of you, when you think about a field, you say that's a negative connotation, Pastor. Don't, brew, don't use that. We don't want to talk about a field, but I'm telling you, in this field, it calls for labor. And the labor of the Lord's, of the Lord's lineage will produce a harvest and a crop. And you got to learn how to work your field well. You may be wondering how it is. That I'm going to work this field. Can I tell you? You got to lay aside your own agenda. And to begin to take up your cross. Daily and follow him. And then you got to do it with understanding. That there are going to be days where you're going to literally feel like quitting. You're going to feel like all is lost. And there's no reason to continue on this fight but can I tell you payday is on the way all I'm trying to tell you is we gotta work while this day because the, the word tells us that night is coming when no man can work that means that you gotta serve in the heat of the day because you realize that one day the curtain is going to come down. And uh, I don't want it to be that I would have, should have, could have. But that I did. And I went in obedience to him. And because God has smiled on the labor, there is a crop. Don't you know? Don't you know that one of these days we're going to stand before him? And I don't know about you, but I want to hear him say two words. I want to hear him say, Well done. But it ought to
going to hear him say, well done. That means you have to have done well. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, did you hear what I said? I said in order uh, to hear him say, well done. That means that you're going to have to do well. Uh, that means they're going to be crying days, but keep on going. There are going to be some hills to climb, but keep on going. Because when you stand before him and he says, well done, the songwriter says it'll be amen. And it doesn't matter what you had to go through. It doesn't matter what you cried over. Just hear him say, well done. Can I thank God today? Because of everything you've gone through, you had joy in the midst of it. You've been able to smile. It's all right now. The doors of church are open. Yep. When are you going to get to it? Seize the moment. Beloved, I tell you, my heart has been heavy for the Christian church because of the things we've picked up and taken up that are not in here and the things we've laid down that are truly what God has in store for us. God's going to deal with the church and my prayer has been for the mercy of God to prevail over sickness and disease, over early departures an unnecessary death. But Lord, be praise if we don't wake up. We're going to catch you with your work undone. And it'll be worse than Mama's switch. Because there will be nothing that will spare us from the hands of an awesome God. I would just rather that you would just move in obedience now to Him that you would say I surrender all to you I give myself away use me Lord for your glory will there be one among us that says God that's me today I, I, I want to I wanna come boldly I want to come wholeheartedly I surrender to whatever it is maybe it's an assignment that you rejected in your life thought would be too hard of God has sustained you. The favor of God is upon your life because God still believes in you. God still believes that he can use you for his glory. That's why the sickness didn't take you out. That's why the storm didn't blow you away. That's why the grief didn't cause you to check out and never check back in because the Lord loves you. And he wants to use you. Will you give it away to him? Will you follow him all the days of your life? Maybe someone wants to come to the altar and say, I need help. God, I need your strength. I'm, I'm holding on to what you gave me, but I need some strength right now. Maybe you need to bow at the altar and, and maybe lay prostrate before him. I don't know what it is that you feel you need to do, but the altar is available for you. This is your space now. It's a testimony before God and God's people that, that my desire is to be found pleasing. They made their choice to be here. You need to make yours. Will you join them right here? Will you join in with the gospel band and say, I belong to him? My heart burns for the church and for the people in God's church. I don't want to see you miss heaven. don't want to see your family miss heaven. 
My prayer is constantly, God, let eyes open. Let hearts hear what your spirit is saying. Don't let us dismiss it and say, that was not for me. come before us and some others that are at the altar bowing and praying amen we'll hear from those who have come to the altar amen altar okay we have two testimonies by sister tanya pitts myers and deaconess um minister slash minister everest kelly good morning church <clears throat> rise and give an honor to god who is the head of my life and who continues to lead me all the way till today. I tell you that this message is what God has been speaking to me. Yes. For many of you, you may know, you may not know, I had a stroke in February yes. and lost sense in my whole left side of my body. I'm still working to get that back. But God has been good to me. Yes. He has been so good to me. Yes. And and I know it was only because I had become complacent. Yes. You know, COVID hit and it gave me a good reason to sit down, nobody noticed. Uh, but he did. He knew that I, I had more in me to yes. give and I was not living my purpose. Yes. And he touched my body yes. so that I could see that those excuses I was making, he could make me sit down. Yes. He could give me a good reason that I can't get up. But he didn't do that. He let me heal. Yes. And I got work to do. And I just come to rededicate myself to him, to commit my life to his purpose. Because without him, I'm nothing. And if I, I'm going to give y'all a short version of this, but, you know, the medical people, like they, I mean, they dropped so many balls. And with my job, I couldn't get all the paperwork. So I could have had to go back to work immediately. But God kept everything in order for me. Not one single doctor was able to say that I needed to be at home, but he had me in place. My boss is, is just understanding. He didn't even care that the paperwork yes. wasn't there. And, and God did that for me. Yes. Um, the paperwork wasn't done, so I couldn't go to physical therapy. But God made a way. He made a way from something that happened all the way back in August that allowed me to get this physical therapy for yes. me now. And I just thank him. 
because he's carried me every step of the way. Amen. And he has made it to let me know that he is here for me. Yes. And I thank you for that word, Pastor. Yes. I yes. thank you for that word. Yes. And I thank you all for your prayers and yes. your cards, your, your gifts. People brought yes. meals over for us. And I just thank you all. I love my family. And I couldn't wait to get back here just to tell y'all how much I love y'all and I miss y'all. Yes. But I just ask that you pray as I continue my journey with the Lord and what he has for me to do. Amen. 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 God bless you. Well, church, I say yes to God, yes to his will, and yes to his way, because he is the head of my life. You know, last year I told you all that God spoke to me and said, Psalms 91 was my prescription for life. And he's proved it over and over and over and over and over and over again. In December, my doctor called me. She said, your platelets has failed. Fell all the way down to 100. So she said, you got to come in. You got to go and get these tests. So they did a test. They did my spleen, my liver, my stomach area, my kidney. They was just a search. But I wasn't worried. Because when he said my prescription, and I take it every morning and every night, I take it like I'm taking my medicine that I take for blood pressure. I take it because the word is powerful. He won't. Let it fail. Okay? I shared this, and I share it everywhere I go. My doctors are even on it now. Because I tell them what I'm doing that's keeping me. Well, they didn't find no cancer that time. Amen. All right? But on about a two weeks ago, I went in, had a mammogram. They said, well, you know, they did it. And then they called me back, said, you got to come back because we think we see some. I said, I ain't worried. Psalms 91, my prescription. <laughs> Take it. Listen to it. I got a prayer. Y'all want it. Tell me your number. I Fix it to you, because it's my prescription for life. So I went in. They took me on up there. And I said, I ain't worried. I was in there. Went on. All of a sudden, she come in. And she said, you free to go. We'll see you next year. <laughs> I said, let me tell you. See, I don't mind praising God before him. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I'm not ashamed of him who saved me. I was a wretch. All undone. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let mama shut her. Glory to his name. Lord, I can't help myself, y'all. So I let him know who got me. I was in the stole yesterday and my cousin come and, and I got to telling her and I got loud. I said Psalms 91. I don't care if they hear it because I want them to know. Get that word y'all. We got to be a witness wherever we go. Huh? I don't care. They know they went to school for all this but they ain't got God. They ain't got him beat. Because he's a doctor and in a sick room. 
Huh? Y'all, please get it. Please get it if you got anything. Anything. It ain't just that. It ain't just that. And let me tell you something. It's over my children. Oh, they coming. God done already told me, Joy, too. Y'all's coming, too. Y'all's coming. They coming. Don't worry about it. Just let your light so shine. Huh? As pastor told us today, and then do the work. Huh? Because if you're out there working for him, he'll show enough work for you. Huh? Let's go, people. The harvest is plentiful. Pastor, I've been hearing that for a while. She'll tell you, I tell her all the time. What I tell you on the phone. Huh? And we got to do it. We ain't got a choice, church. We don't have a choice. He done sent it out to us. And he expecting it. So let us go forward and do what God is saying do. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Psalms 91 reading every day. Because it'll keep you. Not only would it do that, I told you last year, my husband laid his wallet. For those that didn't hear it last year, I want to tell you, he laid his wallet on the counter. And the girl saw it and kept it for him till we got back 25 miles. <laughs> it's your protection over everything you own. Huh? I love y'all. Amen. Amen. We have heard testimony. Yeah. Uh, just, just real quickly, I'm, um, I always want to thank Hope Well because I ask you to pray for me and for my family. You guys do that, and, 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 and it brings results. And you see my daughter, who uh, she was laying up. She couldn't, couldn't even walk. She had no feeling. And look at her here now. Um, you know, but my, um, my son. My son is very sick. And so um, just like you prayed for me when I had prostate cancer and you guys prayed for me and I went to the doctor uh, this past Friday and he said, you're doing well. So you, you, your prayers are working. Your prayers are working. So I, I need you to lift up my son. He's sick. And the doctors don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, he's so weak he can't even... Get off the couch sometime. We're, he always hugs. And when we go to visit him, he can't even open his eyes to, 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 to see us. And he can't even hug his daddy and his mama. So we're just asking y'all to, I'm not asking you to feel sorry for us. I'm just asking you to, to pray for us. Amen. Just to pray for us. Because your prayers work. Amen. Your prayers are powerful. So I'm requesting y'all prayers for my son and for his wife. His wife is... Yeah, she's a beautiful lady. She's taking care of him, but it's taking a toll on her, too. So please, just be in prayer for our family. Amen. 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 When I spoke to Corey yesterday, I told him, keep fighting the good fight of faith. No matter what it looks like, hold on to God's unchanging hand. And he said, Pastor, I'm going to do that. And you know, when he said he was going to do that, he, he, he actually, I could hear it. The encouragement begin to come on you. Because as mother said, our, pres our prescription is the word of God. Whose report are you going to believe? The Lord said he is the one who heals us. Yeah. And let me say this to you while you're sitting there. God has not healed you for naught. He has had mercy many times. But now is the time to put the past behind. And to press forward into the prize of the high calling of God on you. You are gifted, multi-talented. I've seen you in action at UAH. They can't do what they do without you. But there's a place that's missing in the kingdom that has your name on it. Occupy that place. And I'm going to tell you like Jesus tells almost every individual that he heals, your faith 
has made you whole. You're well. You're better. But you're on a path and a process toward wholeness. And wholeness comes because of faith. And not just, oh, I got faith. It's the living of that, the demonstration of it. Your son needs to see it. Your husband benefits from it. And your family is blessed because of it. Tanya Pitts Myers, you are blessed, favored of the Lord. Be about your father's business. We're going to pray for Brother Corey even now. Those of you who know God is able to hear with the lifting of your hands toward this family, we're going to praise God. Father God, we thank you now for what you're able to do and what you've been able to do in days past. God, we thank you for the testimony within his own father of how you've healed from cancer and you've taken those things out of his body, God, and you've kept him clean and clear for your glory, God. I pray that out of Deacon Pitts, Roosevelt Pitt's mouth, God, will continue to be the testimony of your healing. Let him recite these things in his son's presence so that it will give opportunity for the increase of faith now. God, we know that there are sickness and disease and trials at times that weigh heavy on us in this life. We admit, God, that we're sometimes perplexed and, and wondering what the next moment and the next move is going to be. But God, I pray even right now for Brother Corey Pitts that you would remind him, number one, that you love him. Remind him, number two, God, that your, your favor is still upon his life. And then remind him, God, thirdly, of what you're able to do by the record of Scripture and even by the record and testimony in his own family. Look no further than his father and even now recently with his sister, God. And then there may be other testimonies in days past that he can look to, God, and see that you're able to heal from all manner of disease and infirmity. Even when the doctors are confounded by what's going on in our bodies, God, you're already taken charge of our soul and our heart and you've encouraged us God by the strength of your word so God I pray now for his daily dosage of the word of God let him be flooded now with scripture and reminders and recitation from the word of God that brings power in his life right now the power to trust you God when we don't see how it's going to work out the power to continue to walk by faith and not look by sight in the natural and to be able to see God would seem to be impossible see the day where you take away the weakness and replace it with strength to see you God transform a, a body that's beleaguered and battered by pain to a place of where is the fullness of joy and the energy of your Holy Spirit God we believe you for these things right now because we've seen evidence in this room there's a little girl sitting over there God that you brought through a stroke and each time we see a God, we thank you for the testimony in our life. There's a mother that you healed from cancer over 10 years ago who continues to give glory to you every time she stands at the altar. And then, God, there's countless others that you have taken away various trials and tri tri tribulations and sickness from. So, God, we're not worried about what's happening with Brother Corey. We only want to see you glorified. For in your glorification, God, there is the purification of his heart. And then the coming closer, God, to your will and what you have for his life. God, we believe there's another season of service on the other side of a sickness. God, open his mouth with a testimony of your healing. We thank you for his wife that ministers to him. We thank you for her spirit of love and genuine kindness, God. Bless their household, God. Surround it and send your angels, God, to watch over them. In the name of Jesus, we pray and ask these things and we say, amen. Amen. I want to say this to you all. Be encouraged. You all have labored here, sometimes misunderstood, but you stayed steadfast. Trust in God with all of your hearts. As parents, it's difficult to see children go through things. You would wish you could just take it from them and say, let me have that. I'll take it. I'll deal with it. I'll carry it. I'll endure it. But because God wants a relationship with them, their faith is being proven through their own tests. So do you just pray them through the process. That's a hard thing as a parent. Pray them through the process. Keep loving them. Reminding them 
of the truth of God's word and watch what God does in their lives. Great things. Amen. God bless you all. Be encouraged on today. Amen. And for all others who are in a similar place, trust God. Trust God in all things. Trust God. There's some precious capital up here behind us. Trust God, parents, <laughs> as you raise them. Amen. We're getting ready to go. We want to do this last thing today. I want to ask if the secretary would come and help me because she kind of knows what these things are. And I want to say this. Please keep the family of Pastor A.D. Lenoir in your prayers. Even at uh, in the next hour, he next hours he will be laid to rest there in uh, Miami Gardens there. My friend, my brother in Christ, fellow co-laborer in the gospel who was murdered back on April the 6th at his church. Uh, he's he's being uh, funeralized today there in Miami. So please keep him in your prayers. My heart has been heavy as it's there and here at the same time. But that was a friend. Amen. And we certainly thank God for his life and his service. Amen. As a part of the pastor's appreciation, I asked them to uh, to prepare some gifts for other ministers. And so I delivered the ones to the pastors, about 15 pastors in our community uh, receive those gifts from us. And so we didn't want to leave our own ministers out. So it's taken a while to get them together, but we're here today to present them. Amen. Pastor Cole is not here, but we began with Pastor Meredith Leroy Cole. That's one of those. We'll make sure he gets that. Reverend Paul Dillard. If you're here, you just come and grab those things. Reverend Cornelius Adams. Amen. Reverend Gregory Lanier. Minister Everest Kelly, Minister Deshauna Fern, Minister Terry Rogers, Minister Larry Davidson III, Minister Carnell Davidson, Minister Terry Whitman, and Miss Sarah, you can receive that on his behalf. And we certainly pray God's blessing continually upon him. Minister Yannicka Pride. Minister Dr. Sheila Woodard, Minister Sandra Lanier, Minister Michael Garner, and Minister Trevian Smith. He's not here, but we count him too. Amen. So if you want to take that for him. And then also two others that we will make sure, Minister Thomas Coleman and Minister Marilyn Ferguson. Amen. We certainly thank God for the minister's labor here. Amen. Your pastor does appreciate you. And this is just a small token uh, from us to let you know, keep on fighting the good fight of faith as well. Keep standing with the truth of God's word. You are a blessing to the life of this church. Amen. I want you to hear me say this. And you are a part, a great part of this ministry. Amen. Can we give God glory for those who serve in the ministry of the word? Amen. Something unique for the, the, the ladies as well as for the men, a little bit different gift, but we pray that you are blessed and it will be useful, useful for you as you do go forth. Amen. Again, we certainly thank uh, Dr. Sims for being present today with us. You certainly have opportunity to engage her. Amen. Do you have anything to say today? Amen. We're glad to have you today. Any other guests and visitors, we certainly thank God for you as well. We certainly pray that God will bless you all with a wonderful, wonderful week. We will continue in our Women's Day uh, classes on Wednesday night. The ladies will be in here. Brothers will be over in the library. And we certainly praise God for those who will be Even the youth have something going on. So please, ma'am, please, sir, avail yourselves to that. I want to say, parents, we need your youth here beyond just the third Sunday. We thank God for them being here on the third Sunday. Amen. But they're serving on the third Sunday. Their development also matters. Amen. Let me say that again. Their serving matters, but their development matters as well. We have some wonderful teaching, some wonderful people who are working with them Please, ma'am, please, sir, prayerfully consider availing them for such things during the midweek as well as our Sunday mornings prior to our worship service. Amen. We certainly thank God for all that's taking place in this house on today. If all hearts and minds are clear, shall we stand?
like to remind the young children, parents of the Earth Board meeting this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock with the young children. understood in this worship experience. Now, God, we are duly charged to go forth into the fields that are white with harvest. Let us see our co-workers on tomorrow, our family on today, with a brand new sense of urgency and in a different light. Let us see them now as opportunities to share your love with and to show your kindness to. Then, God, in the darkest of dark, in the most troubling of troubles we pray God that you would be glorified and that the light of the son Jesus Christ would be shining bright in us so much so that those circumstances cannot linger cannot continue as they are but they will be changed because of our presence then God I pray now that you would protect us as we go forth we understand that the enemy of our soul goes forth as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. God, we thank you for your hand of covering now. We thank you that we who abide under the shadow of the Almighty shall be able to enjoy your peace and your covering now. God, we ask and pray we rebuke sickness and disease in the life of your people, that you would bring healing over those spiritual infirmities as well. Use us for your glory. Then, God, we pray for magistrates. We pray for government and legislation. We pray that things would be done decently and in order. And then we pray, God, for those who occupy those places and seats of influence. We pray for our institutions and our community that you would be honored and that people would be lifted through their service. Now, God, unto you who is able to keep each of, us, each of us from falling and to present us faultless before your glorious presence with exceeding joy. To you who are the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, henceforth and forevermore. And all believing hearts said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Good morning. In the Lord. These are our announcements. Today's broadcast. We certainly thank you for your presence. 